Great. And, and understanding that we are here in the Middle East talking about the future of the Middle East, but we came from different perspectives, different cultures, and different realities, right? Talal, I think you are the only one among us that you are local, right? So for you, uh, w one of the topics that we discuss in the, in the neuro uh, model is that DNA of the city and DNA of the region should come first before we are solution providers and people are always asking for use cases but then I mean it just makes sense if it makes sense to the to the local reality so yeah how, how do you frame these I mean solutions yeah. for the, the technology bringing solutions for cities but under this cultural perspective how, how do you see this yeah it's very interesting because you know growing up in Abu Dhabi and and looking at what other countries had they you know it was always there was this kind of imbalance right in terms of what we aspired to have and then we accelerated very quickly and I see the same thing happening here with the 2030 vision in the kingdom I think it's incredible to see technology adoption but to Joseph's point I think the the way it's been built has had incremental progress at best in many places in the world because of the um, uh, silos the, uh, as you defined them and the na and naturally with the silos you don't get the benefit of optimization and, and a, a repository of like a, a data lake that is consistent amongst the many different facets of society that would allow you to reap the benefits of that. And so that's where I think the type of infrastructure we are building will help. Now with Neom, you have the luxury of starting from scratch, which is an, it's an, an immense luxury not to be understated, sure right? <laughs> but um, in many other places, you see something working and you're happy with an incremental step change. The problem is that uh, arguably Neom will probably be much more advanced in a much shorter period of time than the ones that are going with that incremental because they are willing to take on so much more, I wouldn't call it risk, but uh, you know, uh, ambition in terms of what, how they design things that are counterintuitive. It's like leapfrogging in, in, in certain countries when it had the telecommunication uh, error. You wouldn't want to put landlines where you can get a cell phone if you're able to get the cost structure in place to where people can then Im immediately have cell phones. So we're kind of in that paradigm shift today. And I think what we are looking at as, as, as a company is how do we enable that quantum leap into the future by disrupting what's already pretty advanced because you don't want to be left behind. And so that's where I think the cloud infrastructure, the scalability of it, and then the fact that if those siloed things, the motivation behind having siloed information was mainly data uh, sovereignty and data privacy. And so if we're talking about healthcare, financial institutions, sensitive government business, they're worried about their data being you know, uh, sent anywhere outside of the sovereign, sovereignty of the country. So the cloud infrastructure similar to ours that allows for that data sovereignty that then allows other companies from the ecosystem to plug into that to force multiply what we're doing is a solution that I think will help us make that quantum leap and enable smart cities uh, even in existing countries that are uh, already advanced the way they are. Great, yeah. I don't know if they, they told you, but we have a two-hour panel. But it will be <laughs> half an hour here, and then we are going to be <laughs> keeping talking uh, outside. So we are, just to wrap, I think that you have now the very important, very important uh, uh, role here to wrap up everything. And yep, I think that uh, you can do this, this leap, this jump to the closed future. We are seeing what is happening, all these hypes, metaverse, and, and, and well, we see that the future is very exciting. So how do you see technologies and the way you are working technology uh, that, that's to come? What, what is tomorrow? What is to come? How do you see this? We have two minutes to wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're asking me a quite interesting question. Um, but let me, let me, let me uh, I think in the future, what would be very important is that we understand how, what, what impact our technology can have. And one of the things we as NVIDIA are working on is we call it Metaverse. And Metaverse is basically you create a digital environment and where you combine, where we are building a platform, yeah, and in a digital environment, you're able to combine AI, data, VR, all the technologies and communicate together. Um, as an example, uh, the best example, if you want to know, is BMW, what we did with BMW. We created a, a factory, a digital twin, in a digital environment. And in that factory, they programmed in, a, you know, in, in this platform, they programmed a complete factory. And I, I think 
that is going to be uh, uh, on top of what, everything we do, but that's going to be uh, a game changer. And we're talking to a city in Europe who is going to build a complete digital city and is going to see what the technology can do to help that city. And those are things which really, because then you can see what happens with traffic, what happens with people mo moving around, but also how the payment systems work and everything else you know, my previous colleagues talked about. Yep, yep. And, and that is something we really uh, want to focus on. And, and, and not only that, it's also understanding the platforms, how you communicate with each other. How, do you, how, how does a financial platform evolve? How, how, you know, how, do you, how do you manage crowds? How do you do um, um, uh, a security? Those are kind of things you, you need to help the community. And we need to help our partners to do that consistent understandable but in a language which is easy to speak and uh, from, from my point of view um, a metaverse where we're going that where we are going to put the real world and the digital world together that's going to help in solving a lot of problems before they even uh, come in my view well fantastic thank you very much i think that we did a very good job and we talk about the past present and future of our <laughs> cities in just half an hour we still have more to talk a lot we could stay here the whole day so if you are curious about what's happening what's to come in our cities feel free to to talk to these mates they really know what's happening thank you very much thank hope you. to meet you in in the future projects around the world and around the region thank you thank you very much everyone thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.